guest is Mr. Daniel Stockin, and the topic is the fluoride controversy. And of course, Mr. Stockin, I think we promised uh, before our first commercial break that we'd give you an opportunity to uh, further inform us of the impact that this 50-year-old uh, uh, item is having upon our society today. So let's pick up at that Okay, point. yes, you know, uh, I want to say that what I'm about to share, we, what we did is we looked around at all the different information that's now come out about fluoride. And what we've done is we've collected information that's just not getting um, distributed or aired very much mm -hmm. from the uh, American Dental Association or the Centers for Disease Control, the mm -hmm. Department of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say that what we're about to share, um, we have uh, a lot of backup documentation on this. Mm -hmm. and, and really uh, an important thing to understand is, you know, when we talk about toothpaste tubes, mm -hmm. uh, it, it did say on the back that this is, it can be a poison. In fact, mm -hmm. if a child swallows this whole tube, he may die. Mm -hmm. um, well, mm -hmm. one of the concerns about this is, is that back in the 40s and the 30s, when we first started to fluoridate, they were going to use a chemical called sodium fluoride, which happens to be the stuff that's in this tube. Mm -hmm. They had a little public relations problem. Americans knew sodium fluoride as rat poison and roach poison. Mm -hmm. There was a problem with that. Mm -hmm. And so um, it came out that some documents came out in a couple lawsuits that there was um, a meeting of dental directors in Washington early mm -hmm. on. And what they did is they were talking about what about toxicity issues? Mm -hmm. What about that? And they were so zealous to want to prevent kids' cavities mm -hmm. that what came out in the transcript, you can read this, they said, if people bring up the whole body toxicity issue, just, just pass that over. Um, don't bring up the sodium fluoride issue. Don't bring up rat poison because mm, that's just not a good thing to talk about. <laughs> and so they, they just really mm -hmm. wanted to prevent cavities. But the question is, was that a good thought process to not do look at the whole body effects of fluoride? Because we were going to be swallowing it, mm -hmm. you know, in the water well, for our whole well, lives. Uh -huh. Little by little, this, this thing called mm -hmm. a cumulative poison. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that came out in this is that now recently we found out where the fluoride that we use comes from and this is really critical okay. um, if people who live in the in the middle tennessee area will look at their water quality report from their um, water district you're going to find out um, in some of them it'll say where the fluoride comes from mm -hmm. and i'll just share what it is this is shocking it's a little disturbing mm -hmm. but ninety percent of the fluoride chemical that we use is taken from air pollution collection devices on smokestacks at fertilizer factories mm -hmm. If you can believe that, that, is, that has been acknowledged by uh, the fluoridation folks. They, in fact, a lot of them in Tennessee didn't even know it, mm -hmm. but we brought it up and they said, oh, well, okay, it is true. And mm -hmm. um, see, that the concern about that is, this isn't some clean kind of fluoride. Mm -hmm. In fact, the fluoride that before, when we started testing in the 50s, they didn't even finish the initial testing. Mm -hmm. They were gonna test it for 10 to 12 years and then start promoting it. Mm -hmm. Halfway through, they said, well, we don't, we don't really need to finish the test. Let's just start putting it in water. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that now the bill has come due mm -hmm. on that. And we started doing it, and you know how hard it is to stop something once mm -hmm. you started it. Well, this chemical is called silica fluoride mm -hmm. is what is being used. It mm -hmm. comes from these air pollution collection mm -hmm. devices. Mm -hmm. What was happening is the fluoride in the processing of fertilizer was coming up to the smokestacks and harming cows and crops mm -hmm. all around the area. Mm -hmm. So they had to collect it mm -hmm. before it did. They put an mm -hmm. uh, air pollution device mm -hmm. on it. And they had this liquid stuff, it had 19% fluoride, and so they said, why don't we take that and put it in the public water supply, and it'll be a win-win. We won't pollute the environment, mm -hmm. and kids won't get cavities. Well, and that's an actual fact. Well, now, it was made up of 19% uh, percent of fluoride. fluoride. Well, now, what was the other? Uh, well, there you go. 81% uh, 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 of, of this item. Unfortunately. There were in, in the fluoride chemical that we use today in 90% of all fluoridation programs, it has arsenic, lead, mercury, and radioactive compounds in it in small amounts. And all of them are also cumulative poisons. They build up in your body. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is big news. I don't know how you feel about your body being the final resting place of the toxic discharges of industry. Mm -hmm. As a public health professional, I'm not real thrilled about it. Um, then something else came up. In the year 2000, well, let's get back up. When we first started fluoridating, adding this chemical to our water, mm -hmm. we said, um, the reason is kids will swallow it. Your body will use it inside to build strong, cavity-resistant teeth. Mm -hmm. But then in the year 2000, we found out that it doesn't work that way. It actually inhibits cavities, the little amount that it does inhibit, mm -hmm. topically. So the example of that is mm -hmm. um, this right here. Mm -hmm. This is sunscreen. Um, if you went to your doctor and you were getting sunburn mm -hmm. 
and your doctor said to you, drink this to prevent sunburn, mm -hmm. you'd look at him and you'd say, why would I drink this? It works on the surface of my skin. It works topically. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the issue. Now that we know that it works primarily topically, in other mm -hmm. words, when it touches your teeth mm -hmm. in your mouth, mm -hmm. that kind of voids the whole purpose for us drinking mm -hmm. it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Why would we drink it our whole lives mm -hmm. A to primarily topically well, acting substance. At all. Right. Mm -hmm. And see, the thing is, when we find out about all the other risks, the health risks, mm -hmm. and you weigh the limited cavity prevention versus all the other risks, mm -hmm. you would probably do what most of the rest of the world has done. Mm -hmm. uh, places like Germany, uh, China, Belgium, 98% of Western mm -hmm. Europe, they reject water fluoridation. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Their cavity rates are as good or better than ours. And, 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 and so we are in, in a real sense, and I also heard that the EPA uh, has not uh, licensed uh, this the fluoride to be used as, as, as a medicine. Is that true? Well, that's an interesting point. You know, this is the only substance we add to water that treats a condition in our bodies rather than treating the water itself. Mm -hmm. We add chlorine to kill germs in the water, mm -hmm. but this is added to the water to treat something in your body and mm -hmm. my body. That means it's a medicine. Mm -hmm. How do we feel about getting a forced medication. Uh, do people really understand? That's why we're glad, grateful for this opportunity mm -hmm. to share this with people. And, and the other point I wanted to make is it's about this right here. Mm -hmm. This is really critical. You see all these, mm -hmm. these are foods. And, and mm -hmm. here's the thing. We are not just getting fluoride in our water Good. or in our toothpaste. Mm -hmm. When you get canned corn or, or beans, mm -hmm. you get a dose of fluoride. When your baby gets chicken sticks, he gets mm -hmm. a dose of fluoride. When you drink apple juice, mm -hmm. you get a dose of fluoride. Grape jelly, mm -hmm. raisin bran, mm -hmm. breads. Look at the sheer, what's happening mm -hmm. is we're getting so much fluoride. These are made with fluoridated water or mm -hmm. they have a fluoride pesticide mm -hmm. residue in them. Mm -hmm. So what that does is this cumulative poison, if you get it from all these sources, mm -hmm. the water, mm -hmm. the toothpastes, and all these foods, mm -hmm. tea, soda, mm -hmm. coffee, you're getting, we're being overdosed on it, and it creates some significant health conditions because of that. So that's why there's a controversy now. Mm. How hard is it for mm. people to, to say, wait a minute, mm -hmm. you mean we're being overdosed with mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. and no one's told us about it? Well, I tell you, Mr. Stockton, let's, let's take this uh, second commercial break, and when we come back, we'll give you an opportunity to talk about some of the uh, health effects okay. and the health impact that uh, this is having upon the American people. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Mr. Dan Stockings, 